Welcome to today's webinar on using DevOps in your enterprise. My name is Ross Beard. I work for Shadowsoft. For those who don't know, Shadowsoft is a systems integrator focused on helping organizations modernize their IT infrastructure. DevOps is a practice area where we have deep and wide expertise. Um, in particular, our engineering team is focused on helping customers use DevOps practices and tooling to improve software delivery. I'm excited to welcome our speaker today, David Rodriguez, who is the, uh, our VP of Technology at Shadowsoft. He will be sharing some of his ideas over the next 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, before I pass it off to David, I do ask that you um, leave your, or you can ask questions throughout David's presentation, but we will be uh, waiting till the end to answer them. So just use the chat pane to the right to ask your questions as we go. Um, lastly, thank you Red Hat for sponsoring today's webinar. We are a strong Red Hat partner, in particularly um, we sell and offer services around OpenShift and Antibol. On that note, passing it to David. Thanks, Ross. I appreciate your intro. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I, as Ross said, I'm the VP of Technology for Shadowsoft, but my career has spanned um, a lot of years and a lot of technologies. Uh, and you know, over the last you know, 12 to 15 years, you know, the career went from being solely focused on quality and quality assurance technologies to more innovation technologies, you know, agile transformations, um, automation of everything, and, you know, digital transformation specifically, uh, you know, aimed with DevOps in mind. So um, my... Uh, my bag of tricks, if you will, or my superpowers, as we like to say, really focus on, on digital transformation and you know all things related to that. So agile, test automation, DevOps, those are kind of where I fall. Um, so let's start our conversation. Uh, DevOps is a, uh, a passion of mine, and so throughout our conversation today, we'll talk about some of the things. You know, we'll hit on benefits of DevOps. Uh, we'll talk about what's in it for me based on my role, hit on some gotchas and why organizations fail at DevOps. Uh, why don't we start off with a uh, definition? And if you go out there and Google DevOps, you'll come up with, you know, 500 maybe more definitions, um, you know, and everyone's got their opinion. So uh, as I worked on developing my DevOps model, I came up with this definition, and it's resonated with the folks I worked with. So uh, we'll term DevOps as a software delivery program, which includes people, processes, and tooling, with an overall focus on continuous delivery of value to the marketplace. Continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous release are all critical components to a successful DevOps program. And we term these CI, CD, and CR. You know, and so if we wanted to summarize, it's really a combination of software development and operations and lots of other disciplines. And it's a melding of these disciplines in order to emphasize communication, collaboration, and cohesion between these traditionally separate disciplines. So DevOps is kind of a conglomeration and a collaboration of all of these, uh, all of these areas. There's lots of benefits to DevOps. Um, we're going to focus on three areas, you know, technical benefits, cultural benefits, and benefits to the business. When we look at technical benefits, there's a lot. Now, here's a few that we wanted to pull out, and we'll talk about a couple other ones. But you know, as we get into DevOps, we're really focusing on um, a system of automated uh, procedures and tools that allow us to identify and resolve problems faster. You know, by using automation, we can detect changes in software quality, and we can find and resolve those problems quicker. Uh, and you know, because we're doing things in automation, we also have you know great improvements in velocity. So as we get into software development, software delivery. Um, things that were once manually done in traditional methodologies, you know, in a DevOps are really totally automated. 
So we like to look at a continuous model that is automated from the first line of code that a uh, developer writes through the de delivery of that code to production. So, you know, velocity improvements are one of the great benefits. Uh, you know, improved software stability and quality. We, um, as we look at implementing DevOps, you know, we do things that improve predictability and reduce risk um, by using automated tooling and automated validation. We're really improving the overall stability of the software and we're improving the quality because you know, we can, you know, run a series of tests that we know must work in order for a piece of software to go to production. And, you know, by executing those and validating that they all pass, we have that quality built in. And then ensuring that we have stability by running things like performance testing that help us test non-functional requirements, um, that allows us that stability. So um, those are some of the technical benefits. And then, um, you know, because we're doing everything in an automated manner and because we're proving these things out, you know, we know we have stability, we know we have quality, there's a far less chance that once we move this product into production that we're going to fail in production. You know, so using this series of automated tools and automated checks and balances, um, we're putting the software through a series of exercises to uh, validate that in a production type environment it's actually going to work. So the chance that products will fail once they get to production is very limited. Uh, so that's those are some of the technical benefits of our DevOps models. Um, culture is a huge thing, huge thing for DevOps. Um, you know, one of the biggest challenges for organizations going into a DevOps transformation is addressing the cultural needs and cultural uh, requirements of that transition. Uh, but some of the benefits, um, you know. One of the side benefits of uh, DevOps is, you know, the breaking down of silos. You know, traditionally, a lot of companies have this feeling of it's us versus them. It could be the business versus software development. It could be developers versus QA. There's the term throwing things over the wall. You know, so there's an us versus them. But, you know, in a DevOps model, it's all us. You know, we succeed as a team. We fail as a team. So that siloing of disciplines is no longer there because really we're only as good as our weakest link so that S versus M is gone. So that's a huge cultural benefit. Um, another benefit is, you know, uh, for a lot of folks, they want to know why does my job matter? If I don't do my job well, you know, it's not really going to affect the company. But really, in DevOps, there's this notion of an individual impact. And for me to, you know, uh, get my engineers to understand their individual impact on our overall delivery. That's a huge thing. So um, I like to, you know, show a picture of here's our DevOps model and here's where you fit in right here. And if you don't do your piece well, you kind of break the you break the chain of you know our automation. So you know each role is very important and understanding the individual impact on that role is a huge eye opener for folks as they get into this model. Um, you know, DevOps is built on a lot of automation, and you know, in order for us to go as fast as we need to, and in order for us to realize the velocity improvements, you know, processes have to be streamlined, and they they have to be vastly improved. So, the old model of you know developers working in a vacuum, coding their uh, changes or enhancements, and then handing it off to QA, which then does weeks or months of testing and then hand that off to, you know, uh, maybe a performance test group or a security test group, um, those processes don't work in a DevOps model. You know, so in order for us to go fast, they've got to be streamlined. We automate the handoffs, automate the testing, automate the building, and as we work together in the team, as we're now working in one silo, not a bunch of different silos, uh, and as each person takes their job seriously because they understand their impact, um, the processes just get streamlined, and that streamlining allows us to go much faster and allows the company to be much more efficient. So, you know, delays in productivity and delays in delivery are no longer, you know, problems that we have to deal with because they've been resolved by, uh, you know, improving the culture. And then one of the biggest benefits for companies um, as they go into uh, a DevOps model is, you know, because we're all working on the same goals, we have a clear vision across the organization. You know, 
quality assurance doesn't have one goal and one vision, and operations doesn't have a different one, and the business doesn't have a different one. You know, we all have the same vision. We're all going towards the same target. So that clear vision across the organization helps um, refine what we're working on and lets us all head in the same path. So that's a huge cultural benefit that helps companies be way more effective and more efficient going forward. Uh, and speaking of business, there's lots of benefits to the business. Um, the list of these is numerous, but we're going to focus on just a few. Uh, one of the biggest benefits is faster delivery of features. You know, in a traditional methodology, you know, it may take uh, months to years to get a new feature out the door. Uh, by going into a DevOps model, the size of the features we're delivering gets shrunk down to something very consumable that could be delivered potentially in a two-week period. So those delivery of those is much faster. So we're, you know, right in requirement. We're developing the requirement, testing the requirement, and delivering that much quicker in a DevOps model. And again, we're leveraging automation to allow this to go faster so we know that even though we're going faster, we have assurance that we're not introducing risk as we're going you know, into the faster model. Um, because we're delivering things faster and we're not spending months or weeks uh, uh, of unnecessary time developing requirements and such, we have more time to innovate. No. So uh, a lot of the teams I've worked with really like the fact that we allow them you know, days or even weeks between deliveries to innovate and think of things that they'd love to do. They just have never been given the permission to do so. So um, this DevOps model that I like to work with you know, really allows our top engineers that innovation time that really feeds their desire to be creative and allows them that time to, you know, propose new things and get new things out the door that could be super beneficial to our customers. Um, you know, as businesses get into a DevOps model and they're working in a more efficient manner, you know, we can actually respond faster to changing market and customer demands. Um, one of the things that companies that are, you know, doing more traditional methodologies uh, face is they just can't keep up with demand. They can't keep up with technology. And, you know, their customers are used to uh, immediate gratification through things like, you know, all you know the apps on our iPhones or, you know, changes to websites. So, you know, we need to be able to be relevant. And for us to be relevant, we've got to be able to be faster and change to the market and customer demands. And, you know, as uh, usage of mobile devices is more prevalent, you know, the requirement for us to be faster is, is increasing. So, you know, companies have to maintain that, you know, rapid response and ability to change on, you know, on demand. So that's another one of the benefits of the business. And really, um, because we're able to respond quicker and able to meet customer needs and, you know, customer demands, we really improve the customer experience and overall customer satisfaction. Now, we're not looking at months for a new feature or a bug fix to get out anymore. You know, we're using our automated DevOps processes to allow us to make changes and get them out in the hands of the customers in you know, days or weeks, uh, and sometimes even quicker depending on the, on the model. So that allows greater customer satisfaction and gives us uh, you know, a sense of being able to meet their needs and requirements. And really, another final benefit here is the entire company is aligned on objectives. So IT and business now are working together versus you know, IT not being able to keep up, up with business demands or the business not understanding the requirements of what it might take to get something out the door. You know, because we're working in the same silo, again, because we're communicating and working towards the same goals, those objectives being aligned is a huge business uh, benefit. So DevOps is pervasive. And as we go into implementing DevOps across the organization, you know, different folks are affected in different manners. So let's look at, you know, some different roles in the company and how DevOps might affect those roles. Uh, if I'm a developer, what are some of the things I'm looking for and what are some of the benefits? So for me, um, you know, traditionally it might take me days to weeks to get a new environment to do, to do my work in. Um, with DevOps, you know, because we've got everything automated, we can do automated on-demand provisioning, um, meaning I might be able to uh, initiate a build and at the end of that build, automatically deploy that build to one or more environments based on 
uh, profiles I've set up previously in my DevOps model. So, you know, at the point where my build is good, I can click a button, have my new environments spun up automatically, so I can do validation in those environments. Uh, and, you know, because I'm doing automation, I get immediate feedback on my changes. Um, traditionally, uh, if I'm doing everything manually, I might check my code in, I might have it built manually, um, I might hand it off to quality assurance for them to do their testing, and then, you know, it might be two weeks, four weeks, a month for me to get feedback uh, on the changes and whether or not I introduce a new defect. Because I'm doing automation, I get immediate feedback on those changes because, you know, we talked about CI, CD, CR at the beginning. My continuous integration, continuous deployment lets me see through automated testing the impact of my changes immediately. So if I introduce a defect or a regression issue for my last change, I can find out in hours or a couple days versus weeks or months. And then, you know, as we get more interested across the industry in security, you know, I need to make sure that my coding is secure. Uh, using automation and being a developer, you know, it allows me validation of adherence to security standards. You know, there's tools that we can leverage and techniques that we leverage to do automated security validation and static code analysis that lets me know immediately if I've created any vulnerabilities in my code, and then it gives me the chance to get them fixed before I get that code in the hands of my customers. So this is a great benefit to me as a developer. Um, you know, for me as a developer as well, I need to be able to test my code in multiple scenarios. So, you know, instead of testing with a single uh, browser, for example, maybe I need to test on 15 browser flavors across different OSs. So I might need to test on Opera and Firefox and three mobile apps and you know Safari and you know a whole bunch of other things that before you know it might take weeks to get through all the different iterations. Using DevOps, you know, I can have my environments that I need to target already defined. And like I mentioned on the very first bullet here, um, I can provision those on demand and test all of them simultaneously using the same type of test. And you know, I don't have to wait for um, weeks or months to do them all uh, serially, I can do them all at once. So that's a huge benefit. And then um, because I'm working with a test team and because I'm working with automation, the amount of testing I can get done in my development window uh, increases dramatically. I can do way more testing in that time frame because you know, I now have these things predefined and all I have to do is deploy my environment, put my code in there, and you know, kick off tests. So instead of only being able to test you know, a handful of scenarios manually, I'm using automation so I can test a, a bunch more and do far more complete testing in my uh, same time window. Uh, operations. You know, operations that is at the, uh, the tail end of the DevOps model. And traditionally, you know, ops has been subject to getting stuff way later. You know, now when I ran QA team, QA would be upset because they'd get code way too late. Operations gives it even later than QA. So, um, you know, in order for us to have a, uh, a good DevOps model, operations gets involved at the beginning when planning happens. So, uh, you know, one of the benefits of my ops teams are, you know, we get to ensure that production-ready standards are met prior to release. Uh, that means I inform the development teams, the software delivery teams, of the things that they must show me and prove to me before it gets to me. So that when I get that completed code or the candidate that's there for release, I already know they've met my standards. And we can put test cases and scenarios in place to ensure that they're met. So it's all automated again. So we don't have to do a whole lot of manual work once I get that production candidate. It's there. So I can release with confidence. Um, and also, because we're using automation, there's far less opportunity for human error in my testing and deployment. Um, you know, automation lets me do things repeatedly, reliably, without having to worry about typos or anything. You know, if I were deploying to 15 environments manually, the likelihood of me typoing one of the parameters in those environments, you know, it's very likely. You know, if I'm using automation and deploying uh, based on a script, uh, you know, I write the script once and then I can deploy it to all of my, all of my environments or my target uh, areas, you know, without any kind of intervention. So it's easier and 
there's less opportunity for human error. Um, if it's going to fail, it's going to fail immediately instead of, you know, after I've done 10 or 15 deployments, did 10 or 15 different environments. So this is a great benefit for me as an operation person. Uh, and because we're using the automation, it reduces the amount of time spent on repetitive tasks. I don't have to manually deploy 15 environments. I push one button, I tell it to deploy to 15 environments, and it's done pretty quickly for me. And you know, some of the SLAs we've got from some of our providers for you know cloud instances, for example, you know, I could request those 15 environments, and within 10 minutes they could be ready to go. So the amount of time waiting on those environments has reduced them dramatically as well. Um, and you know, I can get my new releases out the door faster. Uh, as I do more DevOps automation, you know, the amount of time it takes me to move code from one environment to the next or to promote code from my uh, development group to my production environment, that's automated. So um, once we've met the requirements, once all the tests have passed, then we can actually move stuff to the next environment quickly. So deployment of releases is automated. It's much quicker than it is in a manual, a manual non-DevOps environment. And then, again, we mentioned earlier, one of the benefits to the business and one of the benefits overall of DevOps is there's a reduced risk of releases failing in production. You know, using automation and using all the tooling that we have at our, uh, at our disposal in the DevOps model, um, the risk that we have putting stuff in production is now way reduced because you know, we've proven that the software works all through the development cycle and we've proven that it works in different environments, and we've proved that it meets all our uh, performance requirements. So the, the chance that it might fail in production, they're reduced tremendously. Uh, and that lets us have um, you know, less sleep interrupted nights because there's less calls at three in the morning for operations to look at a problem, and you know, everyone's much happier. So this is a great benefit for the ops team. Uh, if I'm a tester, um, again, like my development engineers, you know, some of the things that I need for testing is, you know, I need immediate feedback. So using the automation, I will either pass or fail a test really quickly. So I've got immediate feedback on my test execution. Uh, and that helps me be able to do more quicker and fail faster so that, you know, I know that I'm not um, propagating poor code further on to the, develop the development life cycle or into the testing cycle. I get that immediate feedback. Um, and also, because I'm doing automated testing, the testing I do is more accurate. I can define specific tests for specific scenarios in each specific environment, and those environments are now closer to production because I can spin up a, a scaled environment that will meet my production, and you know I'll know what my um, performance will look like, and I'm actually testing in a more production-like manner because. Um, my ability to spin up based on predefined environment images, you know, it's there with my DevOps model. So, you know, I'm actually testing more like production versus testing on my local workstation, which is limited and has limited connectivity to those things that are services in production. So that lets me be more accurate and, again, saves time later on because I'm not having to um, try and make sure I've got all the various pieces in place before I release something. Uh, automation creates lower risk due to human error. If I'm manually testing something and manually entering something, the chance that I put a typo in there, it's way improved or way um, increased. So because I'm doing automation, there's lower risk to, to human error. I mean, I won't have uh, a typo because I'm running the same test over and over again. So there's no chance that I might uh, fat finger an entry in a field. You know, the test will work until the software changes, and then when the software changes, we change the test. So there's much lower risk to human error with automation. Um, and like uh, we talked about with developers, you know, the ability for me to test more scenarios and more environments simultaneously, that's a huge thing for, uh, you know, for a test engineer. Um, in the old days, we'd have to have very specific environments you know, set up and uh, able to be executed in, and the setup took lots of time. So um, because I'm using automation and I can spin up you know, 10, 15 environments of different flavors and run my tests in those environments at the same time versus waiting for them to complete in one environment and then start them out next, that gives me much greater um, 
efficiency and lets me do a lot more testing in the same amount of time. And that lets me do um, more assurance and you know, lower my risk for my customers because you know, I know that that one niche case you know, of someone using an old Windows phone uh, and using the old Windows browser on that phone, I know that will work because I've tested for it. So that gives me that um, reduced risk. And then a lot of the automation for DevOps is focused on this term called shift left. And you know, by shifting left for testing and integration, um, it allows me to test as far uh, or as early in the overall development process as possible. So that means as soon as a line of code is written and that code is checked in, I'm testing it. And I can tell immediately whether or not that line of code works for the rest of the software and the rest of the system or not. So shift left is a huge um, uh, initiative and a huge benefit for a DevOps model. Uh, so what if I'm a business owner or a product manager? You know, what are my benefits? Um, I actually have greater influence over the develop development process. You know, I'm working with the developers um, you know, in the same meetings and we're having an understanding. And you know, I can actually influence um, the order in which uh, new features and the bugs are fixed or new features are delivered. You know, I can actually have some voice in that versus you know, putting things in a hopper and ha having no visibility into what's going on. So you know, I can prioritize which work comes first and which work comes after that. Um, using things like uh, you know Scrum or Agile, and you know I can have a greater influence of helping the developers understand when they're done meeting my requirements because you know I'm having those conversations with them. And, and then you know because we're having conversations and we're no longer adversarial, we're we're building better relationships between software delivery and product managers. You know, we're actually working on the same initiatives with the same deliverables in the same timeline. So, you know, we have much better relationships. We're actually, you know, we're we're building friendships and we're building the camaraderie that, you know, may have been more adversarial in an old model because, you know, we just we're working together and we're seeing things happen and we're seeing things get delivered and we're seeing the results of a good DevOps model because we're getting things out the door and our customers are happy. So it builds better relationships and people want to work and people want to be in that environment. So that's a great benefit for the product teams. Um, and you know, as I'm looking at testing out new things, I might want to, you know, see if this feature is something that the marketplace might like. You know, I can put things through my DevOps model and get immediate feedback on pricing, features, bundles, and do some what if scenarios. You know, I've worked in environments where I've had um, a uh, you know a partner test process where I can put new changes out in a uh, safe environment and let my customers come in and see them. You know, that gives us the ability to you know, build some code, build some features, give it to the customers, let them get their hands on it. And that immediate feedback helps validate that I'm going down the right path or you know, gets me that feedback where I can put it back in the product and tweak it so it meets what the market wants. Um, you know, and because I'm allowed to do that and get that immediate feedback, you know, I can do a lot of what-if testing. You know, I can talk to a customer at a trade show and say, you know, well, what if we tried this? And I can actually get a, you know, a feature in a test environment that my customer can come in and you know, I can say, look, what if we did this? And here it is, try it. I can get that validation and you know, gauge the effectiveness in the marketplace based on a typical customer. So, that's a great benefit to me as a, as a product owner. And then, you know, as I'm trying to decide what the customers want, as I'm trying to make sure that I'm being relevant in the marketplace, you know, by doing these uh, what-if scenarios and by talking with my customers, you know, my time to market is much quicker because now I'm prioritizing what my developers are working on, what my you know, software delivery partners are working on, and, you know, they're not working on things that don't matter working on the most important things all the time, and that lets me get um, new product and new features or bug fixes out to the market in a much shorter time. And that's a great benefit to me as a business owner or a product manager. And so, you know, the executives. You know, all of this has to be sponsored by somebody. Uh, the executives have lots of benefits to DevOps as well. Um, you know, for me as a business owner, you know, I need to deliver high quality products to the marketplace, and I, I need to do it quicker. You know, I've worked in environments where 
Uh, software development cycles are anywhere from six to 12 months, maybe even longer. And once I get them completed, my customers don't want them because you know it just took too long, it's no longer relevant. It took too long and I put too many defects in the code. You know, so you know, either I got them out fast with poor quality or got them out with great quality but took too long. Uh, a DevOps model where it's fully automated lets me do both. I can get those high quality products with no known defects that meet all the requirements and I get them out to the marketplace faster because I'm using automation. Another benefit to an executive is, you know, as I'm looking at building my team, you know, I need to have the best people on the team. So when, you know, when top talent sees what we're doing in the company, you know, I'm able to att attract and retain that top talent. Now, these guys want to come to work here because we're doing cool things and we're doing the things that are cutting edge and we're building processes and using technologies that, you know, not a lot of companies use. So, you know, not a lot of folks in my experience have got a fully automated system where, you know, you drop code in and it kicks out at the back with, um, you know, a fully production ready result. And, you know, the things that we're doing in DevOps, you know, our top developers, they want to be part of that. They want to say, yeah, I work for this company and this is what we do. And they want to bring their friends. So that's a huge benefit to me as an executive. Uh, and, you know, I'm not spending a lot of time as an executive, you know, now having to plan around business goals. You know, I can prioritize my goals and I can prioritize when I get these things out. So I have more time to plan. You know, I can start thinking now more strategically at, you know, my 12 to 18 month plan versus having to worry about tactical things in the, you know, zero to three months, three to six month time frame. You know, using DevOps and having the ability to understand that my team gets where we're going, they have an understanding of my vision, that gives me the executive more time to plan around what's next and, you know, start preparing for, you know, my next version, my next release, the next iteration of the company, because I'm no longer worried about keeping the lights on. And, you know, for me to grow my business, I need to make sure that my customers are happy. So using DevOps and using things that reduce my risk and improve my predictability and, you know, give me just better quality, you know, that improves my customer experience and customer satisfaction, and my customers are happy. And they're telling their friends who are in other companies that they're happy because, hey, look, you know, our company has provided the level of service and the level of quality in our software and some predictability in our release cycle that, you know, they can rely on us and they want their friends to come and see what they're experiencing. So that improved customer experience and satisfaction, it hits the bottom line. It helps us get more revenue. It reduces costs because we're doing things in a more efficient manner. And other companies want to come do business with us. So that's great for me as an executive. And, you know, because I'm doing things with more reliability and more predictability, and because I've automated and have reduced risk, you know, the adoption rate of my customers taking new releases, that goes way up. You know, I've worked in companies where even though we can get the software done in, you know, three months, they wouldn't put it in because we've burned them so many times with so many defects in the past. So, um, by doing things that improve our quality and proving to the customer that we've met their requirements in our testing, the customers are more likely to adopt and implement our code. You know, so again, um, in order for me to get paid on my on my software and my deliveries, you know, the customers have to put it in place so they can start using it. And as they start using it, we start generating that revenue. So for me as an executive, I want my customers to be looking forward to my next release and want them to put it in place so that and you know, we can start doing better business together. So we talked about a lot of the benefits, and there's many more benefits that we can go over, but um, let's quickly talk about a few reasons that organizations fail at DevOps. So some organizations buy a tool that is considered a DevOps tool, um, but they don't change the culture. You know, they might have the best set of tools, they might have invested in some consultant to build a good DevOps pipeline, but they didn't really change the culture, so no one's getting penalized for not using the tool or using the DevOps model. You know, so buying tools um, but not changing culture will not make you a DevOps organization, and that DevOps initiative will fail, and you'll end up having shelfware. Um, another 
thing I've seen, another problem that I've seen with organizations why they fail is they've got too many automation and DevOps silos. Um, you know, large organizations might have multiple uh, software development arms and they might be doing DevOps differently. And, you know, my DevOps model might be different than, you know, my neighbor's DevOps model in a different division. And, you know, there's not going to be that um, efficiency that's gained by doing things in the same manner. Or I might have um, the quality assurance team doing the full automation, which would be DevOps supportive, but development's are doing everything manual. So, you know, those silos which aren't connected are preventing us from being successful because, you know, it doesn't matter how fast my group goes, we're only as good as the slowest group on pipeline. So um, those silos that we try to eliminate, if there's too many of them, it's going to cause a failure in the DevOps um, implementation. If we don't change the organization to support the DevOps model, um, we're not going to be successful. That means we need to look at who's on the team and make sure we have the best people on the team in all the roles to make sure that we can support the DevOps model. So not only is changing the culture by you know, saying, hey, look, we're doing DevOps and it's supported from all the levels, from the C levels down to the you know support group, if we don't make the changes and keep people that have always done it this way and don't want to change, uh, the DevOps model is going to not, it's not going to work, it's going to fail because the the transformation that's required to do DevOps well, it will really touch every role in the organization. Anyone that's involved in software delivery and feathering into the business, feathering into folks that are doing support and production, um, everyone's got to be changed so that we can support DevOps. If we don't change all the right places, we might do some things better, but again, it's only going to be as good as our weakest link and our slowest process. So um, got to be a complete organizational transformation to make a successful DevOps model. And if we don't have talented leaders to lead the DevOps transformation, um, you know, we're, we're probably not going to be successful. We might be successful in pockets, but, you know, DevOps transformation really is a journey. And, you know, folks trained in transformation, trained in leadership, trained in problem management, um, those are the folks that are going to be required to lead our organization into this DevOps model and to lead the journey through the final transformation. And, you know, in my experience, it's not a single journey. You know, it may be multiple legs of a trip to get to this transformation journey. And the DevOps implementation I've, I've done, you know, I've gotten to the end of my initial roadmap and looked back and liked what I saw and decided I need to do it again. And so it really is a transformation that is continual. So uh, if we don't have talent in the right places to lead each of the uh, each of the um, disciplines, you know, it's going to be difficult for us to have success. So, you know, we need to look and make sure we've got the right leadership, the right leadership attitude through all, gro uh, all groups and um, make sure that those leaders are aligned to lead us through the transformation process. Um, you know, some folks will try to buy a single tool and say it's DevOps. And you know, if you take too many shortcuts and say, okay, well, look, we can buy this solution and buy this solution and kind of string them together, uh, and those solutions have nothing to do with your organization, you'll probably won't be successful in a DevOps transformation. You know, taking um, best of breed uh, because it was the last article you read uh, and trying to attempt to take too many shortcuts. You know, that's not going to work. You know, the, the DevOps transformations I've seen be most successful are the ones where they truly assess where they are before embarking on the journey, and they have a roadmap, and they have a set of guidelines and, you know, milestones to get to each step in that roadmap so that they understand, look, it's not going to be a, a trip to the, you know, to the supermarket. It's kind of like a journey across the country. You know, it's not a, a quick thing. So trying to shortcut it, um, will likely result in a failure of the DevOps transformation. Uh, another reason why um, organizations fail is they, they fail to embrace a continuous approach. They might have great automation in each of the different areas that can be uh, covered in a DevOps model, but if they don't bring those things together in an orchestrated manner, and it's manual intervention between the steps, like a manual intervention from uh, putting my code in place and doing a build, and all my builds are manual, 
that failure to embrace a continuous approach breaks down DevOps. You know, so DevOps really has to be focused on doing things in a continuous manner so that you know, step A talks to step B and kicks off step B, step B kicks off step C, which kicks off D, E, and F, and then G and H are finally when we get to production. Those all have to be continuous. They have to be orchestrated in a uh, well-defined manner so that we can get software through the system quickly and efficiently with the quality that our customers demand. So if we don't embrace a continuous approach, you know, being truly DevOps is going to be almost impossible. Uh, and doing too little. I mean, we might pick one place. Um, you know, start with the automated build. If we think doing an automated build is all we need to be DevOps, then we're doing too little. So, you know, DevOps really does touch all the disciplines included or involved in delivering software to the customer. Um, so we need to make sure that we're thinking broad enough. You know, now I've implemented DevOps many times and done things in pockets, but then I've uh, strung them all together to make the DevOps model work. So I might start with um, the quality assurance team and do some automated testing or automated smoke tests, and I'd start with the development team and do some uh, automated builds and automated test coverage analysis, uh, and then string them together and you know make sure that as they go through the overall delivery process, um, we're putting them all in contact with each other so the pipeline is being built. We can't just do one piece. And we can do that one piece really well, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if we want to be a truly efficient organization and have uh, much better software delivery, we need to be able to do them all at once. Eventually get to where we're doing um, each step of the process in an automated manner. And finally, one of the biggest roadblocks I've seen is you know companies quit. They'll buy the tools, they'll get some consultants in, the consultants leave, and they hit a roadblock and they, they stop. They go back to their old ways because the culture wasn't changed well enough, you know, the tooling wasn't implemented well enough, the automation wasn't done completely enough. So as soon as the first challenge challenge is encountered, they uh, they quit. You know, they don't have an evangelist, they don't have a champion to kind of, you know push the organization through. So you know they'll just say, you know what, we tried and we failed. Let's go back to our old ways. Uh, so that's really one of the, the worst and most common reasons I've seen for organizations to fail at getting the DevOps model implemented. They, they just don't have the tenacity to overcome the roadblocks. So in this session, we've talked a lot about benefits, you know, what's in it for me and how DevOps affects my role, and some reasons why organizations fail at DevOps. Um, over the next couple of weeks, or the next couple of sessions, we'll talk about some best practices and tooling around DevOps, and we'll look at a case study with some examples of how that uh, particular problem set was solved using automation and the DevOps model. So, okay, thank you very much, David. Appreciate you sharing some of those ideas with us. Um, if this is interesting to you or you're on a DevOps journey or you're not sure if you're on a journey but you want to check in to see where you stand, we are offering a DevOps assessment which will involve a couple of things. Form a discovery on pre-existing DevOps automation tools and processes. We'll assess your integration with your DevOps tool chain. And we'll deliver an assessment report detailing current environment, gap analysis of capabilities, and recommendations for improvement. If this sounds interesting to you, send us an email, and we'll be sure to put you in touch with one of our team members and get you connected with um, perhaps David to help you with this one. All right, what's to come? David mentioned that we have two more webinars as part of this series. Our next one, we'll be talking about DevOps best practices and tooling. So here's a, a little sneak peek at our rough architecture. And then thirdly, we'll have a deeper look into a DevOps case study where you'll learn how a large FinTech used a DevOps model to automate software delivery process. So keep an eye out for those two webinars in the coming weeks and months. Uh, we've done a lot of talking, so now I want to 
pass the mic over to you, our guest. Let's address some of these questions. How about that, David? Sounds good to me.